Hi, it's Sheena Douglas here, and what you're looking at is my um, Christmas rose from my Perfect Partner Scenic Winter range. And these are the biggest eyes I've designed yet, and they're quite elaborate. And they're actually the biggest eyes with the biggest stamps. Am I not pushing the envelope or what? Um, now the thing is, is I think they look fabulous, and they they turned out the way I kind of hoped they would. Few. Um, but there is a technique to marrying up the stamp which comes with this set. So basically what you're looking at is a big die that's cut the shape. You can see all this intricate shape here, all these little tendrily bits and little berries and, and sprigs and things. But you've also got all that detail in the stamp because this is part of the card. So not only have we got cut and boss, we've also got a stamp. Now that's the size of the stamp. Okay, so we need, I'm going to show you how to marry up that stamp with that die because there is a technique. Because obviously we're not, they're not even clear rubber, uh, um, clear stamps, they're actually rubber, which I love because, you know, you really, even I can't destroy a rubber stamp. And so that's the die. You can see all that intricate detail. I'm going to move this away for a sec so you can see all that intricate detail there. All of that is the inside of it, the cut line, you'll feel. There's a little bit of a raised area all around these bits. That's where it's going to cut, but around the outside doesn't cut. So in effect, you can make a really big, whopping huge card. Um, or you can bring it right down and make something much smaller, much tighter. Um, it's just a choice. And um, But what you also get is all of this embossed detail. So even without the stamp, I wanted the dies to work alone and I wanted the stamps to work alone. So if you purchase just the stamps, you've got loads of great stamps you can stamp with. If you get the dies, you can play with them. And then when you get them both together, they kind of power up and they transform each other. But um, this looks fab, by the way, if you just um, cut it out of black cord and add a little bit of uh, gilding wax. It looks amazing. But yeah, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to marry that stamp up with the die cut to get... A really lovely window like that that you can then do other things with I'm just going to show you here's the that's just the die it hasn't even been embossed this is just cut out but watch what happens when we do this so that's gold Mary but if you pop it behind and then just offset it slightly you've got that gorgeous gorgeous bit of foiling can you see that there by the way I've added a little bit of foil there with um, the Pebio paste just to give it a little bit of a vintage theme feel and you can even, I'm going to show you another one in the range, this is the Robin, this is another one of the window dies, so the point being you can mix and match and layer them and look at how cool that looks over there. So you can just literally just keep playing and layering them up and making them as intricate and as detailed and as, as deep and looking into the backgrounds as, as, as you want. Okay, so we're going to get to show you what I want to see now, so that's giving me an idea of what we're looking at. What I've got ready here is my cut and embossed Sheena stamping card. Now it doesn't have to be a Sheena stamping card. I think it I think it would be a bad idea if you do use Sheena stamping card, not just because it's got my name on it, but because it's got my name up because I think it's a brilliant card. And I have looked for many years for a card that will um do everything I want it to do. So it's 300 GSM. It doesn't have a high cut chalk content, which means you can blend it as dressings over the surface. It takes water-based product really well. Um, but any you know watercolor card, any any card you want a good weight card because these are going to be really ideas to look through into other things behind the card to 3D them to layer them. I mean, so I'll just keep them flat. So it's stamped and embossed. Now there's a lot of embossed detail on there. I am going to use a really light distress ink and hopefully you'll be able to start seeing some of that detail I was just talking about just with a little touch of um, antique linen distress ink. Now I'm saying antique linen might have a little bit of gathered twigs on there. You know me, it's a very rare occasion when I have a brand new clean piece of cut and dry foam. So see, I'm just using it. Actually, I really like, because the inspiration for this range was um, Victorian Christmas cards, all those gorgeous, over-the-top, gilt, kind of full-on colour Christmas cards. Um, I keep coming back to them, I love the look. But what I wanted to do was bring them up to date and have dyes, so it makes them kind of 3D, but it also... Um, means that you can layer them and make them you know, really identicate them so make tell your own story with everyone so by adding more of the collection to your purchase you've got more options on what you want to bring in and swap out 
so I love to take the stark white look off the card by using um, a light distress ink, you know, like HP, if I might do, or something like that, tea dye. I'm using antique linen, I like antique linen, I just think it's a really nice, just kind of a, a mellowy kind of colour. And I'm not worrying that I, I'm getting it really, really even here, I'm just popping it on. And if it looks a little bit patchy, I am, like I say, not worried because then it looks a bit more authentic as if it's aged a bit. As you will do by the time you finish watching this little video so we've got you can see the detail you've got the embossed detail there but the big thing I want to show you is how to get that stamped image how do I get it on there in the right place putting it on a block and doing that it's not going to work for you seriously and then stamping and then putting cutting it out and trying to do the the um you know the target practice thing isn't necessarily going to work for you because you haven't got loads of edge to, to target practice it with but there is an easy way to do it so here it is you're going to pop your stamp on your base like that. A big big tip would be I usually like to have a bit of um, stick and spray on the back and it will just make it grip and it's going to not move if yeah and then it, it just makes it easier to work with. Now I'm trying to position this so that it's in shot for you but if it was if it was me just working I'd have it as close to me as I could and I'd look right over the top of it because that will make things a lot easier but I'm going to try and do it so that you can see as well or kind of what's the point. So I'm using, um, I like to use for these Victoria, this Victorian look, I want to keep something quite mellow and vintage looking. I tend to stay away from black. I'm uh, liking the um, archival watering can. I just think it's a, it's still dark enough to have all that detail. It's not a colour, so it's not going to clash with any other colours I want to add to the project. But it's just a bit softer and it's more forgiving, to be honest. Because, you know, I'm not doing traditional stamping style here, so, um, you know, it's... I just think it looks much softer and it works really nice with coloured pencils. So what I'm going to do now, I've got that positioned, I'm now, and I'm going to try and do this so that you don't just see my head, is I'm going to pop this, I'm looking at the top of this image more than the bottom, I'm looking at the leaves at the top and not so much what's happening at the bottom. I'm looking at this bit up here and that leaf there and that little bit there. Can you see that's all I'm looking at? What's going on down here? Here, never no mind it doesn't matter until I start pressing down okay but here I've got that pretty much where I want it and I'm pressing down now you'll see there's an extra bit there's extra bits on the on the um, back in that don't the stamp doesn't hit that's the point there's just bits that are going to just stay embossed as a die cut the image doesn't go on every single bit so I'm looking at the shape of this leaf not this one because this overhangs the stamp big big tip when you cut your stamps out because I if I wanted to stamp this onto a background, um, I use rocker blocks. I love rocker blocks. I didn't used to. I thought they were a bit of a gimmick. I'm not going to lie. Even my friends at Crafters Companion know that. So I'm not like being oh, controversial Douglas Shock Horror. Can you believe it? They know that. I didn't use them. I thought, you know, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. It's fine. I'm happy where I am. Thanks. And then, um, and then you know, my friend Leanne Chivers said, why don't you give them a try? So I did. And after a couple of teething problems at the start where I realised I wasn't holding them right, I absolutely love them and now that's all I use. But the consequence of that means I don't have to buy a mountain foam. I don't have to pay extra money for mountain foam. I don't have to, worst bit, cut through rubber and mountain foam. Which means I can cut really close to my stamped image. And that is a, that's the biggest plus. Because, you know, when you buy pre-cut stamps, you're paying for the time that someone's had to actually scroll them with a saw to cut them. So, um, it's not fun for anybody. Anyway, it's always got to be done by hand and it's a bit of a drag, to be honest. So now, have a look and see what you've got. Well, pretty cool. That's really, uh, seriously, I, I don't want you more than that. What more am I looking for, really? It's all matched up. I've got all my details here. I've got a little bit of embossing on there, which is quite cool. Gives it a little bit more. I've got right up to the edge. If you look at this leaf here, can you see? I've got right to the edge. That's These dies don't have a, um, a, a halo, a margin around them, which means this is the best way to match them up. Did you see those little bits? I just bent them a little bit. I bent the cord to fit on where the die was because once you've cut them out, they're very delicate. They're going to move a bit. Just pop them where you need them to be press down it's all good if I did this and there was a bit missing say I'd missed the leaf down here look at your look at your stamp and because it's archival it's oil based not going to dry straight away you'll see it's shiny still on the stamp you'll see it, the ink sitting there waiting for you all you got to do is line it up again press down and you pick it up the second time 
even the third time. This is why I like to use archival when you first start doing this rather than stays on because it will stay there for a while for you and let you maybe do it in two or three if you needed to. But that is pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Now, to colour it in, what I like to use is, um, I'm loving watercolour pencils um, and in particular, the Spectrum Noir Aqua Blend. These are, these are just great artist quality water pencils, water based pencils um, that have been sourced and actually created by Crafters Companion. They're brought into the craft world so that we don't have to go and know what we're buying in the art shop or whatever. They're, they're actually artist quality, they're affordable and they're put in great sets so that they're great colour um, families and things to use. And I'm using just the primaries here. If you don't know which one to get, get the primaries because you've got, as it says, all your, pri your primaries in there, your yellow, your red and your blue, as well as greens and some um, other little extra bit, loads of greens to be honest. So, when I colour this in, I'm just saying now you ain't going to be impressed. And fair enough, fair dues, because this is the other reason I love using these. I am too impatient to do fancy, pretty, detailed colouring in. Okay, I just like to, you know, that's why I use water based products a lot of the time. And I just splash them on, and I like my inks and my aqua tints and stuff like that. But this is a fabulous compromise because they're portable, but I can still just get really kind of loose with them and just say, sort of, splodge the colour. All I'm worried about here. It's getting colour onto that card. I'm not worried. Roughly where I want it to do, what I'm looking at is in, on my image, you'll see where there's some little darker bits. You'll see the odd bit of shade. Well, it's quite a bit, actually, if you look closely. You see at the bottom of that petal and there's a little bit there. I'm popping the red where it would be kind of darker, either underneath the petal in front or where there's some light lines to suggest that would be where the shading is. And um, that's all I'm popping on there because that's going to be pretty strong when you see when I wet this. You can warm it up a little bit if you want to pop a little bit of an orangey tone in there. You can as well. Nothing to stop you. But what you can do to make it more mellow is when it's coloured is all go over again with your um, distress ink and that will mellow it down as well. So now I'm going to take some a brush, just a, um, a number, number uh, six round brush and some water and I'm just going to wet it and blend the colour. Now, I'm not trying to be really clever here, which is good, because I can't. And um, I'm just literally wetting that pigment where it's gone darker. And I'm not shading really carefully. I'm just, I was really quite loose when I popped that colour down there. And that was the intention. I wasn't going to get any fuss here when I come to adding the water. All I'm doing is trying to encourage that little bit of a random look because then it looks like you've got a bit more depth and shade into your rose because roses are a bit mad when you start looking at them, drawing them. <gasps> Seriously, I've got to have quite a few cups of tea because there's just petals on petals and you got to get the shading right for them to look like roses or they don't and seriously, I could go on. But colouring them in doesn't have to be difficult. Just literally, see I'm wetting where the dark areas are just get that pigment wet and all that colour is going to burst out. But don't over blend where you want the, there's some lighter bits. Keep them lighter. You want some bits where it looks like the light's just hitting the petal. See? That's the beauty of these pencils as well. Because they're a really, really soft, soft core, they, they don't etch into your card. They're happy to just you know, blend over the surface. Now, if you find there is a little bit where you want a bit more colour, what you won't get with with water-based pencils, a blend, is if you try if you pop a pencil onto a wet piece of card. So if I wanted to add a bit more colour to that rose, I wouldn't go straight on with a pencil again. What I would do is get a bit of card, scribble on the card, pick up the colour like that onto my brush, and then pop a little bit more in there. See, and then you've got I think I missed a petal there, and there's a little one there, and then you can place it where you want, just as a, like a traditional watercolour. And even if the kids want to play with your stuff, and normally you know you don't want to really let them play with your stuff, um, if you scribble some of your pencil onto pieces of card, and there's more than one kid around or whatever, they can use the good quality product, learn how it works, because you're never going to learn if you're using rubbish great colouring product, and um, and they've got little their own little palettes. They only come back to you when they need a bit more. Um, I, I just think that's a great idea. So you can see how the roses are going there. The green isn't much more complicated. What I would say is, I'm going to scribble it both. I'm going to scribble the green on there as well, just to show you. That's a bright, bright green. But a way to tone a green down 
is to add a bit of red. So I'm not going to colour the whole thing. I'm going to take you back to the one that I showed at the start. So see I've got that green there. But I'm going to pop a little bit of that red that I used in the flower into that. And it should just tone it down and just make it look a lot more, a bit more natural. Can you see it's just taking it right down from that harsh, bright green that we had. I think there's, there's um, yeah, lots of leaves here for you to do. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. The main thing I wanted to do, the main mission was to show you how to marry that stamp with that. But you can see how that's coming along. You could use a sparkle pen in there if you want to add a bit of bling later. Just a little bit of the clear overlay. Gorgeous. Pop that on there. Have fun. Bit of glitter. You know I don't use glitter hardly through the year. Now and again, a little bit in moderation. But for Christmas, it's I kind of like, yeah, I, I, I kind of embrace me in a glitter goddess. And go for it. So can you see how that's hopefully I try and turn it around. You can see how it's coming on there. See that? And I'll take you back to the one we started with. Got that? And so this is there. So another little thing you can do is you know you can decoupage these so you can see um this bit here has been cut out and decoupaged over the top. Um, another bit here, look, if, if, you, if you stamp it on, you think, oh, you could always even just, you know, overlay and, and add more layers if you want. It's all just to play with. This is just a little, little starter. Like I said, the main thing was to show you how to marry the stamp up with the background. And there you go. Thank you very much.